Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Over the last three or four weeks, I have completely gutted the rear of this vehicle, meaning where the seats are, or the rear seats, taken them out and built two load spaces, combined it with one that was already there, and then completely cleaned up everything around wiring and stuff like that in the back of the vehicle. So this video, I'm gonna walk you through absolutely everything from the back here to the seats, what I built, what I've installed, all the different products that are in here, what all this stuff looks like, how it's all connected, what it all does. That's what this video is about. Okay, so what's in the back here? So let's go over this side. So this is a Dometic 35 litre CFX fridge. It's sitting on a DFG off-road fridge slide. This came from the States. Reason why I needed to go buy it from the States is it was almost impossible to find a Dometic fridge slide in Europe that fitted this thing or any fridge slide. So the only place I could find it was in the States. So that's the fridge slide. The 35 liter fridge for me is just about perfect. Anything smaller than this, you'd struggle. Anything larger, it just wouldn't fit in with the footprint that I have here. So if you go to things like 40 or even bigger, it's way too much fridge for what I need. And I'm not going out to things like the canning stock, so I don't need to worry about loading this thing up. This is enough for two people for three or four days, so milk and all those sorts of things can go in there. This is the Nomad Kitchen. This has been in for a while. As you've seen on the channel before, this pulls all the way out. Let me just quickly show you. It's not easy to do with one hand. And the Nomad Kitchen allows me to store things like my Jetboil Genesis. It's got a sink in it. It's also got storage. There's a chopping board. I love it. Absolutely love it. Now, it's not cheap, and it did cost quite a bit to ship it, although it was only about £25 in weight to get it. So it's really not that heavy. But anyway, that's what the Nomad Kitchen is. Down here is two Renogy 100 amp hour batteries. These are lithium. I built a frame where the second one will sit to make it flush, but it's wedged in here. It will not move. I've gone out and done rattle tests and stress tests on it. Pretty happy with the way all that is. All of the wires you see here at the back, which you may or may not be able to see, I'll quickly show you. In there, there's a massive great Anderson plug that all goes to what is hidden behind the back here, which is my Red Vision system. So in here, which you can't see, but I'll tell you what's there. Up on this side, there is a 1000 watt Red Arc inverter. Underneath that, hidden behind the back of here, is a Manager 30, and then the Red Vision system is behind it. There is space behind here. It's probably about that much space, about my, the length of my hand between this panel and the back panel. So it's basically built in two things. So the panel actually sits on feet that join up to the back of the top of here. And all of the electrics are on the back board. And then this has really just got cutouts and feeds to what's behind the back here. There is distribution blocks back here. There is the shunt that monitors the power coming out of the, the house batteries. This goes directly to the inverter. This is my shore input. And this originally was going to be where my water input was. I'm going to remake this because the water input isn't here anymore. And then here I've got my Red Vision system. Those of you who have seen, been on the channel before have seen all of that. Everything is controlled off of this. And then I have my USBs. So I can do solar input to charge up the batteries. And then I've got three which are 12 volt out. This one is, used to be for my tent power, for my rooftop tent. I used to plug in an Anderson plug to get power to the tent. And I've got different color Anderson plugs, depending on what I need to power up. Over here is my Rochef. That is here to stop it rattling, because it does. I've tried it many times. It's great. The only thing I would say is you have to preheat it. So I've done pasties and sausage rolls in this. Turn it on, preheat it, stick them in. Doesn't take long to do. Great. Again, I've been rattling, trying to figure out where rattles are on this. And 
it's all sort of bolted in. Again, same type of framing. All of that is bolted directly to this. You can hear some of it rattle. What I might do to stop it really rattling, we'll see what it's like off-road, is it's these that rattle. They might just come straight out. Anyway, that's the Road Chef. That again is hooked up to Red Vision. So I turn that on through my Red Vision system and then I can turn on how long the timer is and then set what the temperature is. Over here is my Egon water hub and the way this is configured is fresh water from the 50 litre water tank that is behind the seats or was behind whatever the seats were, which are not there. This is a hot water. This comes out of my Equios water heater and this one is external pickup. And then these two pumps are controlled off these switches. So the top one controls fresh water, hot water, bottom one controls input of source unknown water. Now the way that this works is pretty smart is if I plug the hose in here, put it into a bucket, suck water in by hitting this, I can only run this as hot water shower or whatever the shower might be. So I turn on my water heater, then I can get hot water from source unknown input output. I've tried this, I've had five showers out of this when I was in both Germany and when I was in Finland, works fine. All I've done is reroute everything out the back here. Now a couple of things, building this, it's all custom. You can't go to anybody and say, can I get one of these off the shelf? So everything here has been custom built. The original frame here I built last year with also the back panel. And so with this in, this has now caused me to take out this trim panel. So on this trim panel, you see there is an insert here for the speaker. This won't fit. So on this side, what I've had to do is to take it out. Just like the trim piece that went on the bottom here, that has come out too. And the reason why I've taken them out is I don't want to go and damage anything. So this was easy to do. I don't have a speaker on here. Not that I really care that much, to be honest with you now, because I can still hear things fine at the front. Um, but it wouldn't fit. And I didn't want to go start trimming panels and things like that. So anyway, that's there. On the top here, this is a drifter tent pole. And the great thing about this is it hooks up its amber. And it's also white as well. So those of you that may not know, but bugs don't like amber light. And this is also connected in directly wired into a distribution board behind the back here. And it's also got a little jog switch in here where you can actually change the intensity. I also have one here. Now this is supposed to be magnetic, which is fitted on here, but I've got a couple of zip ties. And then this again, amber and white. And then that just runs through a cable down through the back here. At some point I will figure out how to clean that up. And that just goes into a cigarette plug, which is down here. Now this is for Starlink. And so I'm going to find a way to sort of keep this in. I will put a piece of Vel Velcro probably down here somewhere. Not sure yet. And then what I do is I plug my Starlink into the back of here. Turn this on. That gives me 240 power. So that powers up the router for my Starlink system. And that runs off at 240. This is uh, a Renogy One. I don't, I've used it. This is a monitoring system for what's going on with my Renogy batteries. Again, down there. And there are some switches on it, but I have not turned wide anything up on the switches. This monitor in here, I, I did put it in when I built this panel. I may just take this apart and take this out and just cover this in because I just don't know whether I'm going to use it. But this came free when I bought my second Renogy, Renogy battery. It also came with a Bluetooth monitor as well, which is down here somewhere. So I can actually monitor everything through an app of what's going on with my Renogy batteries, which are now, again, to 100 linked together to give me 200 amps. But I can also monitor it again through the Red Vision, which shows me what my battery states are. So anyway, that's everything in the back. I have, as you can see here, I've got a fire extinguisher. There's space down here. I've got things like my Indeflate warning triangle. I've also got a hammer and tent pegs, which are wedged down here, but they don't interfere with the fridge slider. Okay, so that's the back. 
So what else have I done? So as you can see, the rear seats are all out now. And what had happened was I progressively gone down, taking the split seat out on the other side and then the two seats out here. In the end, whole lot came out. So this one was the original box that I built, which houses things like my Egon water hub, which is down here, and the Equios water heater, which is under here. Just pop this up and I'll show you what's in there. Should be able to see everything. All right, so that's in there. That was originally behind my driver's seat. The problem was that it was too high because I couldn't rake my seat back. So after again, as I've said before, you go away on these trips, you test stuff out, doesn't work, come back, do it again. So the seat's out, I put this in the middle. So I didn't have to remake this or figure out where everything else was going to go. So I made this one up, which is just a flat platform. It's on two legs down here. And then what I can do is I can store things underneath. So at the moment is just a tarp in here. There are my amber covers for my headlights, for my spotlights. And it gives me a platform, ideally for things like luggage. So wheelie trolleys and things like that can be stacked up here. Or even as I've got my Step 22 bags, I made it so they would fit here. So there's plenty of space to store things in here, which is the most important thing. Storage. That's the cable for my Red Vision system, for those of you who want to know. The whole thing is braced together by this trim piece that goes all the way around to the other side and that stops this thing sort of shifting backwards and forwards. There's also in between here I put 25 mil closed cell foam and that stops this metal to metal rubbing. So there's a small shelf here I can put things like a pillow up here. None of that stuff's going to get moved around. It just gives me plenty of storage. I've got a net up here as well so things like soft items go in here. So there's a whole different things in here. There's a jacket, there's pillows, uh, there's blow up small mattresses, head cushions, all that sort of stuff goes into the back here. So on this side, I built two pieces. Now this comes off, but the way I've designed this was, I wanted the way to be able to put things like a chair. This is my j -cop. It's in here. Um, and then all my other Helinox lightweight gear. Um, this is my moonshade awning. It's another blanket. All of these things can go in here. And they're protected up against this side, as well as protected up against the back of the seat. It's not going anywhere, and that's the good thing. I mean, if there is some sort of massive thing that happens where we get into trouble, these things are really not gonna come flying over. So underneath here, again, I've got more storage space where I can put other fairly lightweight. These are sunshades for the chairs. Um, I can also put in sort of tent poles as well. They all fit in here. This is right the way through to the other side. So this gives me even more space to stack up stuff that generally you won't get to all the time. So those are in here. Again, easy way to be able to pull out my chair, my j -cot. And then hidden at the bottom here, is my Starlink. You can just about see it here. So my Starlink is in here and that lays flat up against this sort of surface here. And then I've got some foam on top where the feet go for the Starlink system. And again, inflatable mattress, a lot of stuff you can store down the side here. Um, and it gives you plenty of place to be able to, this is my inflatable mattress, this is the next peed. I can keep on storing soft items down here if I need to. There's plenty of space and storage here. So the water tank filler is here on top. It's where it used to be on this panel, which was here, but I've remade that. And then shifted everything here. And you can probably just about see there's the concertina pipe. There's also my ultraviolet light in there to kill off anything. And all of the different vent pipes are in there as well. But that is all down into the back there. Okay, so if we clamber in, 
this is what is on the back of the larger box. It was here before, but I didn't attach anything purely because I completely messed up, made it too big. This became this panel here, this Molly uh, tactical panel became redundant because I couldn't fit anything up against my seat. Anyway, I think I fixed that now. So on the tactical panel, I've got a at hand, easy to use fire extinguisher. I've got my first aid kit over here. And at the bottom here, I got things like head torches, all that sort of stuff that is down here in another another molly bag. This is a 67 designs mount for the worn Xeon hand controller for the winch. And that is on a rail. So the great thing about this is I can take this off, put in a GoPro mount and have a GoPro facing this way towards the dash. I've got a USB-C and a USB-A port here as well. And that is just wired directly into the secondary battery at the back. And as I mentioned before, let's quickly show you, lift it up on this pole. You can see what's in here, which is my Equios tank. It's my hot water tank. And then down here is the Egon water hub. And you can see all of the cables are all routed directly to the back of the load space. Now, the great thing about going through this exercise is I had two Pelly boxes on the roof. I've now managed to save one Pelly box that I don't need to put on the roof because everything that was up there, which were things like camping gear, my Helinox table, the J-Cot, the tarp, all of that now can go into the load spaces that I built inside the vehicle. It's good because what I've managed to do is remove weight from the roof and put it lower down in the vehicle. Now, for those of you that are out buying or looking at rooftop tents, I urge you to seriously consider buying a rooftop tent and also look at the weight of what is going on your roof. You also need to look at whether the roof rack can actually take the weight of the rooftop tent as well. I chose last year to bin it and remove all of the weight as much as I possibly could off of the roof of my vehicle and redistribute it elsewhere inside the vehicle. Now, I also know that some of you got kids, you can't take the rear seats out. I get it. But for me, I have a luxury that I don't need them, and that's why they came out. But it's taken me close to 18 months to come to the, you know, the decision they need to come out. So what I'm going to do is I have my spare space saver wheel on the roof now, primarily because it was under here. Not that I ever needed it. But if I did, all of this would have to come out so I could lift it all up. Now with the seats, before I could push the seats forward and then this comes out, this comes out, everything would push forward. By having these load spaces in there now, I can't do that. And that's the major reason why I moved that to the top of the roof. One Pelly box will go up there and I'm probably going to look at reshifting it around. So instead of going that way down the vehicle, I'm going to switch it so it'll go this way and put all my recovery gear out the back here. So all I need to do is jump up here or up through the ladder, I can lift the box up and get to my recovery gear, and then push the spare wheel into the center of the vehicle, and then my max tracks will go at the front. So I'm gonna work on that over the next couple of weeks before I go on and do the Trans Portugal um, and rework what's up there. So those of you that follow the channel know that I suffer from a symmetry OCD, and that by only having one box down one side will just completely mess up with my head. So what I'm going to end up having to do is just rework everything, which will just require me to drill some more holes in the bottom of the Pelly box. Um, I've got a plastic welding gadget that will fill in the holes anyway. It's not a big deal. I can plug them. Um, they were secondhand, and then I will probably just put that at the back here. And again, it will make it real easy for me just to hop on the ladder and at the back here have my Pelly box lift up um, to be able to get to my recovery gear should I need it. So I'll work on that over the coming weeks. Um, to be able to do that before I head off on my trip to tackle the Trans Portugal. Well, I hope that was of interest to you. This is the whole of the load space in the back of the L322. It didn't take a lot of time to build it. When you look at all of the tube work and everything like that, this one here probably took me, I'm going to guess, it took me a weekend to build it. And like a lot of these things, when you build them out, you have to map it out first measure it twice, cut once, or in my case, measure it about 10,000 times, then cut it once. There are plenty of times I've got it wrong, um, but that's okay. That's the fun of building these things out. So all of this is custom work um, that I built over a period of time 
And those of you who've been with the channel for a while know that this one has been in for about a year and a half, maybe a year. The other stuff probably took me in total, I'm guessing a day to build it because I'm now used to figuring out how to work with this material and these connectors. Um, it doesn't take that long to be able to build it out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really hope this has been of interest to you. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Click and subscribe. If you do the bell button, great. If you don't, then you'll miss out on new content. And with that, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.